Welcome to the Sentai Podcast with your hosts, Sam and Jay. We're here to discuss our favorite anime, interview industry figures, and a whole lot more. Visit sentai.com slash podcast to see what we're all about. Today, we're talking to Tony Oliver, who voices Lupin the Third. All seasons of Lupin the Third are coming to high dive. All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of the Sentai Podcast. Everyone, please give a warm welcome to Tony Oliver. Uh, you may have heard Tony's voice in Naruto as Minato Namikaze, Rick Hunter from Robotech, Lancer from Fate Stay Night. Love that series. Uh, but today we're here to talk about his role in Lupin the Third, namely as Lupin the Third himself. Yeah. Um, most recently, Lupin the Third, the first film from our friend over at G Kids. It's available now on Amazon. Um, and yeah, we're so excited to dig into your experience with Lupin. And thank you so much for being here to talk about your incredible work with us. Well, thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here. This is uh, this is fun. I've never actually done anything quite. I've never done like a big podcast like this before. You know, I had never done a podcast either until this podcast. So we have something in common, <laughs> I guess. Yeah. All right. So uh, just let's get to know you, I guess, off the cuff. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about yourself outside of work. Oh, outside. I, I work a lot. So there's not a lot of outside of work, especially okay. after things shut down. I just really cocooned in after that. Um, oh, for sure. Um, I, I've, uh, I'm, I've been doing this a long time. I'm a, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I, I've got two kids. I've got four grandkids. I've got... Uh, yeah. Um, um, I used to ski a lot, but uh, yeah. I, I break too much now. And I used to love to <laughs> scuba dive, but I can't do that anymore either. So uh, now it's ziplining. I really like ziplining because uh, that gets the adrenaline up. And um, and I and I really, it's funny because I always did music and theater and all that stuff as a hobby. Mm -hmm. So um, when it came time a few years ago, when I had a little time for that only lasted a very short time, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I went back to that. So I think I just I'm just kind of a, a theater geek. Um, voice you're, actor guy yeah <laughs> you're know. in good company with tom and i tom is a huge yeah. film buff and i have a musical theater background too so yeah Yay. you're in, you're in good company. <laughs> um, so is acting voice acting something you always wanted to do tell us a little bit about your career how that all got started um no actually i wanted a career in the theater uh i was yeah. doing musicals here in la which meant you know yeah. no money um but, uh, <laughs> i uh, wasn't expecting you to say that but it's yeah so true. It, was, it was it was you know you, you work all day and then rehearse at night and then do mm -hmm. your shows on the weekends and and then, you know, you pay for your own costumes and all that. And, now, right. and then now the way it is now is you have to pay to even be in the companies. So you have to pay dues to be in the theater companies. And they have right, right. So it's even more it's even more expensive now. Right. But I was doing that and I was trying out for every television show I could get. Uh, I was trying to get on camera and I found out very quickly because I did get cast in a couple of movies. And I found out very quickly that I was really bad on camera. Oh, no. Really bad. It was it was it was awful. The, the theater training made everything way too, too big, big and way yeah. too broad and I and nobody was telling me that I just looked at myself going oh my god I'm awful yeah. <laughs> and uh, and, uh, and then I turned to my wife and said if I am as bad as I look and she said as, and she said yeah oh, sorry no. she always tells me the truth though she tells me what I'm good to valuable valuable <laughs> partner to have yes. though someone who's going to save you from future embarrassment by yeah, a little tough yeah. love now yeah so I, I I dove into theater and I started looking and I answered an ad in uh, in what was called Dramalog, it's now called Backstage West now, but it used to be called Dramalog, and they were looking. Somebody was looking for somebody who sounded like they were under eighteen, but was over eighteen because of the labor mm -hmm. laws, and um, <laughs> yeah. and they had to have some ADR experience. I had no idea what that was, but I I I I, I, I submitted myself anyway, and I got an audition. <laughs> yeah, and I uh, and I had a friend who did ADR, so I asked her what it was, and so she kind of explained it to me briefly. Right, and I got and I got the audition. And I landed the part, it was a little tiny part in a Louis Maul film, just doing a couple of little lines for a, char a side character and then all the bits and wall and stuff after that. Right. And, um, and they liked what they heard and they pulled me out of the room and they said, you do have experience, right? I said, well, yes, of course. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and they had me audition for something else. And I landed that, um, which was a, a, an enormous uh, joy for me because I had right. been, you know, years getting rejected and suddenly I land not only a, a voice in a feature film, but it's a, it's the lead, right. <laughs> but it's this thing called anime and I'd never seen anime. I mean, I did, but I didn't know it oh, um, wow. before that. And so it was called the sea prince and the fire child, which has been re-released just in the last couple of years. And, um, and that's how I got into voiceover. Uh, the, everybody wanted my voice. People like me on stage. People like me on the voice. People do not like my picture. So okay, <laughs> at right. least not when it's moving and trying to act. Right. So, 
So that's kind of how it started. That ended up on television, and then uh, it wasn't overnight. I mean, it, it was like a year and a half before the next thing came around. But um, that ended up on TV on a very fledgling new cable network called Showtime. And it was just, I mean, Showtime was like less than a year old or something like that. Wow. And then that jumped over to syndication. So it was syndicated on like one of the, and, and, um, and suddenly I get a phone call. Uh, are you the Tony Oliver that did this? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, we'd like you to come in and audition for something. Um, but we're going to pay you for it, which was really unusual. So they brought me in and, uh, and they had me chase, uh, uh, it's hard. I'm using terms. I had me chase dub, which is uh, when you you just go along, you just roll along the picture, and you just try to keep up with the lip flaps as you're reading, right? And you're just acting in real time with the picture. And they had me do that for a Japanese soap opera, and they paid me for that, and then liked me and cast me in uh, in their little thing, which was called uh, which was Macross. Oh, that was wow. a little three episode thing, and then uh, so we did that, and they said it's not going anywhere. Don't worry about it. And oh. uh, at that time, because I was quitting acting, I was I was done. Okay. I was literally done. I was. I had taken a job with a friend of mine. I was putting a radio station up up in Bakersfield, California. Mm-hmm. I was packing the, the the one kid we had at the time. Well, no, actually, we had two at that point because I had a second child at that point. Okay. Uh, we took packed the kids and we were heading to Bakersfield for me to go work in radio sales because I was mm-hmm. just done with the acting thing. And uh, after I'd moved, they called me up and said, "Um, we sold a." 80 episode series we need you to come back here and that was robotech uh and and yeah so i was living out of town and commuting back in because i wasn't gonna get finally somebody's gonna pay me to act yes (laughs) so yeah so i was commuting i was commuting back and forth and um and did that and um then that eventually led to writing and moving behind the scenes and which is where i really found a lot of success uh, as a producer and stuff and then i came back as as an actor uh in the early 2000s when anime was blowing up again so that's was gonna, kind of my yeah. career in a nutshell <laughs> oh i love it um what a wow a real journey a real yeah cyclical journey um so i was going to ask you though about like your exposure to anime before you voiced you know lupon or basically anybody mm-hmm. in the anime world were you aware of what lupon was before you were cast uh was anime still kind of you know, a thing that you knew of because you were sort of associated with it, but it wasn't really a pat. Like, explain your relationship to anime with it. <laughs> well, mostly I was only aware of things I had worked on, you know, which was uh, like Robotech and and uh, I did some Megazone. I did a few anime around the place. So right about that time, I started working as a producer for Saban and that led me to Power Rangers and other things. Right. And that was, it was my relationship with anime that actually led me to that gig. But okay. um, it was kind of distant. I mean, I appreciated it. I appreciated the art form. And the first time I saw Akira, I saw it in Japanese without subtitles. Oh, and wow. I don't speak Japanese. And I was blown away by how well the story was told. And I didn't understand a word they were saying. Right. So I always appreciated that 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 storytelling style. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, but what, by the time I got to around to Lupin, I'd been doing anime for a little while. But I was not aware of Lupin. Okay. Um, before I started in anime, I I had watched anime as a little kid. Back mm-hmm. in the 60s, you could watch Kimba the White Lion and Gigantor yes. and Clutch Cargo and Speed Racer all right. on the, the local UHF channels, the, the little channels around L.A. Yeah. We, we had a lot of channels in L.A. Uh, growing up. Um, so it was uh, so I was but I wasn't aware that it was anime. I had no idea it was Japanese. Interesting. Um, so uh, when I when I got uh, Robotech was the I mean, Sea Prince was the first time I was really exposed to it. Mm-hmm. And um, and so my relationship was always kind of at a distant uh, until I got into uh, until I finished Power Rangers, frankly, uh, yeah. which was anime based. Although not really, yeah. you know? the, the Super um, Sentai. It, I mean, that's su- what we named yeah. our company after. Was that exactly, genre. exactly? So it's uh, so I was, uh, and uh, by then I had really become a little bit more schooled in the culture because I had to translate some of what what we wanted to use, but we were not going to call it what they were going to call it. But I needed to understand what they did with it so I could understand how we could right, morph yeah. it into something American. Is that a so, pun with the the word morph there? No, I did. That was unintended. Power. But all right. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm usually with dad jokes, but I don't, I'm not, I will refrain. <laughs> usually Tom's the one with the dad jokes since he's a dad. Uh, producer Tom is on the line for listeners at home, but I, I have to have a dad joke every now and again. So thank well, you. Okay. No problem. Um, yeah. So when I hit, when I hit Lupin, I had no idea. I'd never heard of Lupin. I mean, I, they told me it had been around for a while and I knew, I knew of the, uh, the castle. I can't say it. Cagliostro. Castle, Cagliostro, thank you. And I was aware that uh, Bob Bergen had done it right. uh, because I, I knew, I've known Bob Bergen for a long time. And, and uh, I mean, oh. uh, we're, we're, we're acquaintances. We're not friends. But, but you yeah. know, we're friendly to each other when we see each yeah. other. We occasionally share a meal. And um, um, 
so I was aware of all that, but not of the history of it. And and in okay. fact, when I was brought into to 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 audition for it, I was very uh, confused because they wanted me to audition for Lupin, and I'm not a I don't usually do comic voices. I was always the straight ingenue, the the kid, or a, or now I play a lot of dads, you know that yeah. sort of thing. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting to be read for a comic role, so I thought maybe I'd get Goemon. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jigen seemed a little bit stiff for the for the kind of things that I do, and uh, and and I figured that I was going to play bit parts in the show, um, and Surprise. so uh, and, um, and and so I didn't really research it <laughs> just uh i just yeah. kind of read it and uh and tried to find the comedy in it and uh and i was surprised to call be called back for three of the four roles i read yeah. i was not called back from for zenigata uh, i think they found him instantly yeah um but um and then when i got the call that i was loop on i was i thought it was you i thought it was a mistake so, no, I know I'd be going. I'm one of the other. I'm not the comic guy, and so uh, so that's uh, I was stunned. Um, so that's when I got to know the, the the characters and the and the plot. And I really we we did it so fast that I really only got to know the Lupin we were doing, which I think was mm -hmm. season three. I think was where we started the okay. Red Jacket uh, series. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was first on um, Cartoon Network or wherever it was. Um, so I, 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 so it's when I first started to kind of understand the thing, and I was mm -hmm. most shocked when we were done. And a, a couple of years later, I started going to conventions a lot, and the amount of fandom that was surrounding it absolutely yes. stunned me. Oh I was, yes, I was. I, I, I really kind of had to look back and go, what, what did I? What was I just a part of? Because, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it was, uh, it was really amazing. The first day I try, I started teaching right around, right after that. Uh, and the first the first class that I taught uh, voice acting classes, uh, a bunch of people showed up in Lupin cosplay. You know? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> it was really weird. It was really strange. Um, and now I've really gotten to know them. I mean, I've gotten to know them. I've gotten to love them. Uh, yeah. I, I love this show. I love the series. Um, uh, and I thought that we were done. I thought we were done 10 years ago. And yeah, uh, and that are. was it. And it, it moved on because, you know, there had been a couple other iterations and a couple I've been involved in. I mean, one one. Keith Silverstein playing Lupin. Right. Uh, so I figured well, we're done. We've moved on. You know, things I'm the fourth or fifth person to play the character. Right. Uh, so there'd be more. And um, and to be now suddenly they asked us back in this last like three years, we've been doing series after series and movies after movie. And then the yeah. big the big one from G Kids, which was really amazing. It was oh, amazing to go and see it in the theater. Because I never yes. had I'd never had that experience as an actor to go and see a movie that I was a lead in on the big screen. We're doing I, I, um you know, yeah, we're doing episode one of part one, which is getting a new dub. Yes. We're doing the first episode dubbed in theaters along with the first two subbed episodes of part six. So that's going to be really fun to see that on the screen, too. Oh, I'll be there. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll be there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A producer, Tom, could probably hook you up with tickets. I don't know yeah. if I we, just wrote we, him we've a already check. Had <laughs> oh, you already said, okay, good, good, good. I was like, I hope yeah. I didn't just write Tom a check. Uh, oh, no, cash, it's, it's all good. Good, <laughs> good. yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you how you approach the role of Lupin, considering it's such a well-known role. But I think you kind of answered that question. Yeah, I, 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 I've helped I've helped other people uh, step into well-known roles where they were either uh, replacing somebody because they they retired or passed away or something like that, or just because they needed to sound somebody that sounded like him, but they couldn't pay for the big guy. Right. right. And um um and, and it, it depends on what your goal is. And what my goal here was not to imitate. I needed to see what was what was in front of me first of all mm. um the scripts were very different than they were in the original japanese they were really oh, yes. updated because they were in the set you know it was 60s 70s cold right. war humor <laughs> you know so suddenly they had to <laughs> yeah. be updated so i really didn't want to I, I just pay attention to the character as it speaks to me now mm -hmm. and take the guidance of the writers and the directors and sometimes the producers if they're involved to kind of shape it in the direction that still honors what's there but i'm not having to look at that because if I try, right. I, I'm a mimic. And if you yeah. put me in that direction, you won't get something that's organic or real for me. It'll, it'll, it'll be, it'll sound right, but it won't quite Feel have right. the soul. Yeah. yeah so I, sense. um, so when I approach a role like this, it's, it's mostly that it's just trying to be honest to the moment and mm -hmm. honest to where the character is. And especially now that Lupin is very different than he was when I started. Yes. Um, he, yes. he was a little more of a, of a, of a, of a prankster and a, and a good hearted thief, a Robin Hood kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and then he morphed into something really dangerous for a while. And yes. now it's kind of a little blend of both where he is a thief and we acknowledge that. And, uh, he's not a nice guy all the time. Um, 
And but now there's the it's a little more depth. Uh, in season four, Fujiko tried to kill him, and it yeah. really hurt him. And there was yeah. it was great to play these scenes where Fu, where where Lupin is finally feeling something and, and expressing upset and, right. and 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 playing with it. So it's um, if, I, I think if you get too stuck in what was, you can't get to the next place that it needs to go. I think and that's so, uh, a hugely insightful thing to say, especially yeah. considering the series, you know, that Lupin is how yeah. you touched on this. We did a, dis- a discussion episode and we talked about how Lupin has to evolve with its audience, has to evolve mm-hmm. with the times. In uh, part six, there's a lot of new technology that um, Daisuke Jigen in particular is grappling mm-hmm. with. And they have a beautiful send off episode for the actor in episode zero. Um, mm-hmm. But that's kind of what you're talking about, that evolution of character kind of mimicking the evolution of the world around Lupin, like the world and Lupin have that symbiotic relationship in that mm-hmm. sense. So I imagine that plays into the role quite a bit. Well, it does because I, I you know, for instance, I'm, I'm directing the current series too. So it's, Ooh. it's, uh, mm-hmm. it's, uh, I, I have to be mindful of where we are in history because it, Lupin starts as a cold war thing after the world war two, mm-hmm. uh, cause we just finished dubbing a bunch of first se- first season. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, starts way back there, and now we're at uh, 2011. Mm-hmm. So and so, I have to be cognizant because and the humor changes and what you can refer to changes. So that that does uh, that that's something I have to pay attention to. And quite frankly, I've never been involved with a project that that lasted that long. Right. But you had to pay attention to that sort of stuff. Right. So uh, it's it's uh, for me, it's uncharted waters. <laughs> have you um, seen the last episode of Part One, the first series, with the refrigerator? The, I haven't seen it yet. I've seen the part that I play. Okay. But that's there's, all. <laughs> there's a scene with the refrigerator where they like, we're standing on a top of a bomb and they climb in a refrigerator and the bomb goes off and they get yeah. shot into the ocean. And it's yeah. the Indiana Jones crystal skull movie moment where, you know, he's in the, anyway, I thought that moment was funny. Um, yeah. But I, don't think, that, yeah. <laughs> I don't think you'd see that, you know, in a modern iteration of the show. You know, oh, no. Very, I mean, I, I, yeah. this is the, the, fr- the first season was the most politically incorrect thing I've ever been involved in. I mean, it was yes. really something. Uh, oh, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, it reflects its time. Everyone's smoking. Mm-hmm. It's very sexist. It's very, it's very male heavy. It's, it's, mm-hmm. uh, it, there's a lot of uh, stereotyping that goes yeah. on. Um, yeah. So it's, uh, that's, a, that was a little tough to kind of look at sometimes and go, do I have to say that? <laughs> do I really have to? No, it's worth to come out of my mouth. Yeah. yeah, I really want to say that. <laughs> I guess um, this is kind of related. I guess if you could play any other role than Lupin when he says mm. horrible things, um, <laughs> what other role in the series would you want to play? What other characters gravitate? Do you gravitate toward? I love Zenigata. Zenigata. I love Zenigata. I love I love the way Dan Lorge played Zenigata, and I love the way Doug Erholtz is playing Zenigata right now. He's so fun. It's so big and broad, and yet there's heart inside the broadness, yes. and that's what I love about him. Um, uh, and I also love the affectation that Dan brought to it, which was the constant uh, the constant mumbling right under his breath, the thing that he did that I just yeah. love. <laughs> oh, it's, it, so, yeah. it fits the character so yeah. well too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's your favorite character? I guess I is your favorite character to watch on screens and he got it then oh yeah absolutely yeah oh for absolutely. sure absolutely yeah no question huh yeah, not, no question no. Uh, we, we play favorites in this household it's fine it's fine well it's also <laughs> you know um the other more interesting character to me is also fujiko but yeah. i'm just always mad at her because i'm i'm lupon so i'm always <laughs> pissed off that lupon takes it from her <laughs> yeah. oh man so, but it's a, another very complex character uh mm. there was a the Fujiko Mine's lie in that film. Um, you know, you see, you see a little part of her you've never seen before that she actually right. has a sweet side that she completely covers up and and negates at every chance she gets, but it's right. there, you know. Right. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's fun. It, it's the one thing that I don't get with the other series that I've worked in is is to time to actually have get to know these characters really m- more deeply than than I would like Naruto was great, but, but I mean, it was, it was there and it was gone and it's done. And it's never coming right. back for me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, it's, uh, but Lupin has continued on and on. And I've been able to kind of get to know these characters with each iteration. You see a little bit more of the onion peel comes off a yes. little bit more. And I find that a lot of fun. Yeah. The, the series is celebrating its 50th anniversary. I mean, that number alone tells you what yeah. legacy it must have. Um, yeah. how does it feel to be a part of something with such a legacy, how does how does that feel? Um, it's something I always aspired to, yeah. <laughs> honestly, uh, to be part of something that has some 
some legs and uh, and mm-hmm. that has some time on it and and has a fandom that loves it and not because of the ego of it but just because I know that we're making people happy and yeah. and which is what the the the, the, the non tangible part of being an entertainer is you get to make people happy and uh, and that's a and I think that's a noble pursuit so <laughs> um um you know there there are uh, I, 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 guess that's it. <laughs> well, you mentioned the fans earlier about how mm-hmm. they are so dedicated. Like mm-hmm. I have a friend named Coffee. It's it's their favorite thing in the entire mm-hmm. world. And they talk about, you know, Lupin is just is just such a big deal to them. So I know you are probably bringing a lot of fans dreams to life. So thank you for yeah. all the time and effort you have put into this. It's yeah, such thanks. a wonderful it's... series. And we can just tell talking to you that the love is there for this series and you're here to treat it right. And that's, yeah. that's so beautiful. Thank you for that. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. It's, it's look, I tell, I tell, uh, I tell my students that the a career in, in, as an actor is an awful lot of, of doing stuff for a paycheck. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're doing shows that, that you don't necessarily like or agree with or want anything to do with, but you need to pay your bills. So you do what you have to do. And then every once in a while, something comes along that's really cool, that you can really put your heart into, that you can kind of pin that one on the, on the, on the wall that, to remember. And this is one of them for me. Mm-hmm. I, and not only that, it's turning into one of the biggest ones in my career. You oh, know, really? and I've had some yeah. big, I know I had Power Rangers in my career. Yeah. I had a pretty big show, but this one personally is becoming probably the, one of the most important roles I've done for me. And, um, and, uh, and one of the ones that I'm starting to really kind of be most proud of. I so. mean, you're coming back to a series that came out 50 years ago and mm-hmm. you're going back to that. There, there's so much history there. There, That's, yeah. that's incredible. Yeah. Wish the animation was a little bit better. <laughs> I mean, just a little, I mean, just a little age, bit better. <laughs> yeah, we'll forgive it for its age, of course, of course. Yeah. Also, I got to say, the animation in Lupin the Third Part First, uh, Lupin the Third, the First. first. Wow, um, beautiful yeah. CGI is not normally something the anime community is like super happy about, but they yeah. really captured that feel of the series in this CGI update movie. There's a there's a tangible thing that Pixar does with their films. There's a ta- there's a thing. I don't know what it is, but it it draws you in. It makes it it pulls you in. It's part of the storytelling, part of the look. It's it's all combi- And I thought Loop on the Third the first achieved that, yeah. uh, which is rare. I mean, not DreamWorks does it once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Pixar does it all the time, but this is the first time I've seen that in an anime. Where yeah. I could really, you could. I love the fact that I could tell that Lupin was wearing leather and Jigen was wearing wool. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's that yeah. that tangible something. Yeah, you're right. I can't I can't find the word, but it's that mm-hmm. texture. It's yeah. The, they used to call it weight. it when they're talking it. about a person. It's oh. the it, whatever the it is. Some people have it and some don't, and I, I can't define it. And and, okay. and look, I had a, I had an experience earlier on when I was doing a movie, and I was uh, we were. Uh, voicing animals with all these big celebrities. So I got to work mm-hmm. with a bunch of big celebrities and direct them. And uh, and I was a little upset because I thought, you know, we have in our voiceover community, we have some great actors, some really some of the finest actors I've ever had the pleasure to work with, I find in the voiceover community. Right. And uh, and yet, when I had Suzanne Summers in the booth, there was something different, something special, something it, some thing that she brought to the table yeah. that others did not. And so I started to understand why some people are celebrities and some aren't. And right. sometimes it has nothing to do with their talent. <laughs> but it's the but, it. but yeah. it's that it, that thing, that that presence, that that attraction. I don't know what it is. Wish I had more of it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Lupin stole it from <clears throat> Maybe. it from so many people. He's <laughs> definitely got it sticking around this long. Yeah. Um so do you have any I just turn toward the humor. Do you have any like funny stories or anecdotes from the production of all these myriad Lupin voiceover <clears throat> moments that stand out to you? Something that maybe it'd be neat if like you haven't shared this before and fans can be like, ooh, that's a cool backstory, a fun story. I don't know if I have many. We 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 were going very straightforward. I mean, the the the, the original production for me was was a was a whirlwind because mm-hmm. I was at the same time that this was happening, I was hired by D- Disney had bought Power Rangers several yeah. couple of years before and they were now in production in New Zealand and Disney called me and hired me to go to New Zealand to show them how to do the post production of the show because oh it was gosh. different you had, it's a different way of making the show right and so we had to rush so i was doing 6 8 hours in the session in the booth at a time um yeah so there was a day for instance where I, this is a, this is funny to voice actors maybe but I, I walked out of the booth and i was looking at i'm shaking my head going uh, you know dude i'm so sorry i just i'm exhausted i just suck today 
and Richard was directing and Richard goes, that's okay, buddy. We'll fix it tomorrow. I mean, it was just like, there was, <laughs> and so yeah, you suck today, but we'll fix it tomorrow. Yeah, it's fine. We'll fix it in post. We're fine. Yeah. There was, a, there was an awful lot of that. Um, um, we laughed a lot doing the show and we laughed a lot. Uh, we did a lot of ad libbing. Mm -hmm. Um, um, it was, <sighs> wish I could remember specifics that I could talk to on a family show. But if you ever go to Richard <laughs> Epcar, if you took ever a, a Richard Epcar at a convention, he does a, a bloopers panel mm -hmm. and an awful lot of those bloopers are me. Oh, oh, <laughs> yes. I see. I Either see. Either making mistakes or saying inappropriate things to the camera, to the character. Can't um, keep guessing. Keep them on their toes. Yeah, no, yeah. no, no, no. Uh, I don't know. I can't. I'm trying to think of, I had a story in my head and it just kind of left. So I apologize for that. Oh no, totally fine. Um, so we got to talk about the elephant in the room, the okay. mighty morphin elephant in the room. Yes, oh, yes. Because you referred to it a few times now, and I'm a '90s baby. I was born mm -hmm. in 1990. Power Rangers came out in what 1993? 93. Yeah. So that was the um, the star of my Saturday morning cartoon binge. I gotta say, <laughs> not even cartoon binge, but you know what I mean. The Saturday morning, uh, you know, had the bowl of cereal, wearing the yep. footy pajamas, watching. <laughs> so, yeah. How in the world did that get started? Can you just tell me a little bit about? Power Rangers and your sure. relationship to it. And also just, was it awesome? Was it just awesome? <laughs> was it a great time to be alive? <laughs> yes and no and yes. <laughs> okay. Um, it's, uh, they, they, uh, I, I was, I got involved with Power Rangers because, um, uh, I worked for Saban Entertainment. I was a I was a producer there, and uh, and I was uh, sometimes directed uh, when they had anime and stuff to do. I would direct that as well. Mm -hmm. But I was mostly a story guy and and a producer. And I was on the development team. And Haim came to us and said, showed us this show with people jumping around in spandex and latex monsters, and and explained what he wanted us to do, which was to remove anything that wasn't Japanese, mm -hmm. and replace it with an American television show. Don't right. worry about the Japanese story. Just use it. Yeah. And I thought he was crazy and, but he, but he pays my that. bills. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and did it and uh, we started working on the scripts and, and the book and it was, a, it was a year of, of, of development almost. Um, mm -hmm. um, and when we first started, the first thing we did was took some of the footage and put rock and roll stuff, put rock and roll on it mm -hmm. and, um, and have some sound effects and showed it to a focus group of kids. There was no story, no spandex, just the monsters and blowing up and they lost their minds. So, so we knew we were onto something and it was a, it was a long development. I mean, we took a year and then we went through casting, which was, it was a little while. And when we opened, uh, when we started to, to work on the show, um, um, I was, uh, I, I, I was the, the, because I'd written all of the, the, the development materials, I'd written all of the, uh, the, the, the story Bible. It was a 60, 60 page story Bible, uh, for the whole thing. Um, uh, they, they gave, I was, I became head writer of the show. And so I, I had a team of writers, one of whom went on to become exec, he's now passed away, executive producer and story runner of NCIS. So I had some <gasps> good people. Yeah. And Gary wow. Glassberg was one of our writers. Yeah. And so, um, uh, and, uh, and we just proceeded without, you know, at, at, back at work, you know, I'm in a big corporation, so all of the corporate guys are diving for the. They don't want anything to do with it because it's too weird, and so they pretty much left us alone to make the show we wanted to make. And uh, Hyam had uh, his hands completely in it, um, uh, which is the reason I say that is because usually the head of the studio does not put his hands in the show. That this was head, this was Hyam's show, top to bottom, uh -huh. and um, and uh, and we we made a pilot and hoped to God it worked, and it did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and ever yeah. did it, ever yeah. did it. So I, I mostly, once the show was going, I was a co-producer. I mostly handled the back end. Because of my anime experience, I handled the back end of the show, which means all the monster stuff, all of the voices yeah. that had to be done in ADR. That's what I took. I, I, I focused on that because there were plenty oh. of people focusing on the story and on the, I, I did the first year as a head writer. And then I kind of backed off and just did the post-production. Right. Um, and so for, and so I cast a lot of the, uh, all your favorite voices. I cast all of them oh. and I played Saba myself. Uh, I was oh. also uh, the Megazord. Megazord activated. That was me too. <laughs> <laughs> and I was there character? until uh, I was there until Turbo, uh, until uh, Turbo, yeah. and I just couldn't get behind the little kid becoming a bigger. Yeah, it was just, yeah. I, was, I couldn't find another way to justify that story. So, and there was opportunities to do other things, so I did them. And there you went. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do you have a favorite character from Power Rangers? Yeah, I have Billy. to ask. Billy. Billy? Yeah. Billy was me. Billy was you. Uh, Billy is me uh, multiplied. I mean, it's just yeah. Billy, the geek in the room. The, the, yeah, he was my favorite guy because he, he was me. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, I get it. Yeah. Rita was always my favorite. I don't know what that says about me as a person, but you know what? <laughs> Your strong woman <laughs> likes to control. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, by the way, just for the gift of that in my childhood. Because I know oh, for pleasure. me and a lot of other anime fans, that was a formative, a formative show. And thank so, you. yeah, thank you for that gift. I, that was a leap of faith. The kids are not <laughs> easy to please, but by God, you did no, it. No, we were, look, the, the, I, I'm, I'm starting to write some memoirs about it, but but in the in, at the beginning of the, uh, at the, the we we had no idea, we had absolutely no idea. I am the night before we did it. Told, looked at me and said, "If we pull this off, it'll be the freaking miracle of the century." Right. And and it was uh, it was a leap of faith. Um, nobody yeah. thought we would succeed. Uh, the, the the president of Fox Kids Network had her job threatened. If this doesn't work, you're out of here. That's what Rupert Murdoch wow. told her. Yeah, it was a leap of faith. And Hyam would have lost fifteen million dollars had this not gone anywhere. So it was wow. It was a big leap of faith, and uh, and thank God it worked. And it's still going. I can't believe it's still going. Yeah, <laughs> never never going to end. I mean, people love yeah. Power Rangers. Yeah. You know that that kind of bringing it back to Lupin, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, the reason we're here and everything uh, that actually kind of echoes a, a bit of a story about the creator of Lupin the third. Um, he Monkey first dogs. wrote a one shot called Playboy School. Um, and then they gave him the pen name Monkey Punch and he didn't like the pen name. They said, OK, come back for a little limited series. And he said, well, I'll, t- I'll take the pen name Monkey Punch, even though I don't like it because it's a limited series. It'll be fine. And that series was Lupin the third. And it <laughs> took off and he was stuck with it for forever. So that's funny. I was I supposed don't... to meet him at a convention and then he got ill and then couldn't come. Passed this is about away. 10 years ago. No, this was yeah. long before oh, that. But yeah. oh, yeah, he passed away in 2019. So that's what yeah. I thought you were about to. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so is there, uh, I always have a ringer question I throw in at the end, but before I get to there, um, producer Tom, do you have anything you want to ask or any fun uh, facts? You, you had a good fun fact and that's usually what I do. So. <laughs> uh, I, no, I think we're good. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. All right. So my ringer question, I always throw this into every podcast interview is mm-hmm. what haven't we asked you that you wish we would have asked you during this interview? Is there anything you've been dying to share oh. that we didn't get to? This is your bingo free space, if you will. So if you need a minute to think of something, that's totally fine. Um, we can always I, cut it out and post, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, I, I, I've, been, I've been around Lupin so long, I think I've been asked almost every question you can be asked about it. Oh, I'm um, sure. The... Uh, I don't know, maybe about the camaraderie of the cast. Uh, this is the, one of the oh. only casts and voiceover I've ever been with that we we have a connection as yeah. a cast. Yeah. Uh, we're not just disparate voices that have come in and played it and gone away, which is what mostly it is. Right. Uh, we were friends. Uh, we hang out. I mean, we don't hang out together because I'm a, I'm a homebody, even before COVID. I stay right. at home a lot. I like my wife. I like my house. <laughs> I, I'm the exact same way. Totally get you. Tom yeah. is too. No judgment. Yeah. Um, but when we can, we get together, we have a great time. And when we start working together, it's like, it's like it was 10 years ago. It's like we never, yeah. when I hear Michelle coming through my headphones as loop on, it's like, it, you know, my heart gets big. It's, uh, yeah. it's, uh, we, we have a, we have a general love, genuine love for each other. And that's uh, the, one of the things I love most about this show. That's beautiful. I love that. That was a great response to my ringer question. <laughs> oh, good. Wonderful. Get an a. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've been with us for a good while now and we don't want to take up too much more of your time, but where can people find you online to keep up with you? You mentioned you're writing some memoirs about that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, so I got to follow you on social media so I can be first yeah. in line for well, that book. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully I've, I finally got it started. I've been trying to get it started for years and and right now it's I'm in the beginning of it just kind of doing the setup so i haven't gotten to the to the meet yet so we'll see one writer to another i wish you luck <laughs> yeah thanks. wish you so much luck. i have an outline so that's good oh yeah start <laughs> yeah. there yeah uh, okay, so for me, Instagram, uh, Tony Oliver two seven five is okay. my handle there. I don't social media much. I, okay. I sw- I'm swearing I'm going to do more of it. You know, um, it's a second we'll job, see. so we'll I get you. Yeah, so I don't want to get too involved. But uh, for Twitter, it's at Tony Oliver VA. Okay. And Facebook, it's facebook.com backslash Tony Oliver Voice Actor. Oh. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'll go follow you on Insta right after this. I don't Twitter much, but I do do some Instagram. So yeah, I, I'll I, see you there. it's really weird because I don't I don't tweet very often. It's really rare. Only when I have something to say, if I have if I have something an event, and mm-hmm. it's the tw- it, Twitter that that has most uh, effect. That yeah. Where suddenly it's everywhere. It's like, well, <laughs> but I never know. I I don't do it, so it gets reached. I don't know how it works. I really don't know how it works. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag in there, pray, little blood sacrifice. I, I, I got the algorithm thing down, but but that's it. So. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, thank you so much for being here with us on the Sentai podcast. You have been a delight, well, an absolute delight. So thank you. you. It's been a joy to talk to you. Thanks. It's been fun. Anytime. Anytime. Yeah. All right, Sentai fans. Thank you so much for being here. Tony Oliver, everybody. Voice of Lupin the Third. Bye, guys. Check out Lupin the Third, the first by G Kids. Available on Amazon now. And the dubbed seasons are all coming up. So check those out when they drop. And yeah, thank you again. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Sentai Podcast. This episode was brought to you by High Dive, where you can stream thousands of hours of anime, including Lupin the Third, for $4.99 a month. Visit highdive.com for details. Special thanks to our guest, Tony Oliver, our host, Sam Butler, our producer, Tom Helberg, and our audio engineers, Brent Marshall and Ricardo Contreras. Thanks for tuning in. 